Welcome to our review on understanding heat and temperature. So first thing we actually need to know about are a couple of definitions. So we've got two terms that we need to understand the difference between to avoid misusing them. So first one is the word temperature. So when we're talking about the temperature, we're talking about how hot an object actually is. Now the temperature is measured in degrees Celsius or degrees C. And what we find is that it's actually referring to the measurement of the average kinetic energy of the particles in that particular substance. So what we've actually done as scientists is we've given them some easily observed reference points. So we'd have things like zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water, 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. So it makes it an easier scale for us to work with. If we consider heat then, this is a form of energy. Hopefully we know that from lower down the school. Because it's a form of energy, that means it must be measured in joules, which has got the symbol of a capital J. And it is a measure of energy on an absolute scale. This means it isn't related to any reference points, which means it's not quite such a straightforward scale as our temperature one. But what we do need to remember is that the hotter something is, the more heat energy it has. If we think about temperature differences between objects, then different objects are at different temperatures. So if we have a cup of tea in a room, what we find there is that the cup of tea is hotter than their surroundings in the room. So as a result of this, we see a flow of energy from the tea to the room. So what we need to remember is that when there is this temperature difference between an object and its surroundings, then we have an energy transfer and the greater the difference between those two temperatures, then the greater the rate of energy transfer. So what we find is that if we're thinking about our cup of tea and the surroundings, a cup of tea is warmer than the surroundings, so energy flows from the tea to those particles in the air. If, however, we've got an object that's cooler than the surroundings, energy is gonna flow from the surroundings to the object and therefore warm up the object. One way we can actually observe these different temperatures of objects is by using something called a thermogram. Now a thermogram is a special kind of picture that we can take using a special camera that then shows us how hot an object actually is. And it does this through representing them with different colors. So what we can see there on the right hand side is a picture of an elephant then taken with one of these thermal imaging cameras that's created our thermogram. Now, if you have a look at the different colours we can see there, the hottest part of the elephant is there on the trunk because it's the white part. Then we go through red, yellow, green, light blue, and finally, the coolest part of the whole picture is the dark blue. So the surroundings there are the coldest of all those bits. You do need to remember the colours there. So whites, reds, yellows, they're the warm ones. And then the greens, light blues, dark blues are the colder temperatures. So just remember that different colours represent the different temperatures. And the name of that image is a thermogram.